Hello everyone, this is the 8th grade math unit 4 review sheet. With topic 1, we're determining if a relation is a function. Just remember, every x has to have its own y if it is a function. So, in the first one, it's, it's asking if which relation is a function. So, we're looking at the x's first. So, we're just going to look to see if the x's repeat. Um, so we have 2 and negative 1 and negative 1, negative 1 and 2, negative 1 and 3. The same x can't go to two different y's. All right, so now we are going to look at b, and we see that 2 repeats, and 2 goes to 4 here, and 2 goes to negative 4. That is not a function. The c we're going to look and we see that the x repeats right there and the x repeats right here. It doesn't matter as long as it repeats once and goes to a different y. That means it's not a function. C is not a function. 2, 1, 0, negative 1 and negative 2, all different x's. So that is a function. Every x has its own y. Which set of ordered pairs is not a function? Not. So we're just going to look for the x that repeats root and this goes to one the three goes to two that is not allowed it is not a function a number three which table represents a function uh, represents something that is not a function a relationship that's not a function one goes to four and then 1 goes to 5. That is not allowed. This one is not a function. All of the other ones, the x's don't repeat, and every x has its own y. For number 4, every time you have a graph, you are going to use the vertical line test. And I am going to go and say that this is a nonlinear, nonlinear. First off, and it is not a function. It's not a function because it hits twice. That vertical line test hits here and hits here. And it's nonlinear because it's not straight. Now we're going to do a vertical line test here. And I could do a vertical line test here. And we could say that this is a linear, first off, this is a straight line, and it's a function. For the third one, we are going to do a vertical line test again, and we could do a vertical line test here, or here, does not matter. Um, so that is a function, but it's a non-linear it is not straight function. So it's asking which one represents a linear function. Two is your answer. That's the only one that represents a linear function. If we go into topic two, topic two is determining whether functions are linear or nonlinear, something like we already did. But now we're going to have equations and graphs and stuff like that. And remember, function A, it has to be in y equals mx plus b to be linear. If it's in that format, it is linear. If it's not in that format, it is nonlinear. So we're talking about this right here where we have the variable as the denominator. That is not allowed. This is nonlinear. Anytime you have a variable as a denominator, the bottom part of the fraction, that means it is nonlinear. What are other nonlinear linear equations? Remember, you can't have anything in y equals mx plus b format. So 
the first thing that we do say is that anytime you have an exponent next to a variable that is nonlinear, anytime that you have the, an absolute value graph that is nonlinear, anytime that you have the variable as the exponent that is nonlinear. And it does say other, but we're just going to put 7 over x when the variables in the denominator itself, it is nonlinear. So just remember, you can have anything like uh, y equals 3x squared, and that would be nonlinear. And those are some other nonlinear equations. So for number two, which part of the graph has a constant rate of change? And remember that word constant means the same. It remains the same, a constant rate. So this right here, this section is nonlinear. So this right here from negative 7 to, to negative 4 is not constant. This right here is a straight line. It is remaining constant, but that is not, um, let's just see. Well, let me just move this down, All right? A constant rate of change has to be straight, and that is straight. So I'm just going to put this down to negative 4, and it stops at 1. So this is constant. It's a straight line. So I'm going to circle that. This one right here, this part of the graph, is nonlinear. So that's not constant. This part of the graph here is nonlinear. So it's not constant. So the only constant part of the graph is the horizontal line with a slope of zero. That is a constant line, straight line. So B is your answer there. Which equation listed below is linear? This is not Y equals MX plus B. This is not y equals mx plus b, the exponents next to the variable. This is y equals mx plus b. This is not y equals mx plus b. Just remember, y equals a half x. The slope is a half. The b is zero. That's a direct variation, by the way. Which phrase represents a nonlinear function? Nonlinear. So anytime you have a nonlinear function, um, remember, it has to have, uh, the, it has to have something where the formula has an exponent next to the variable or something like that, right? It can't be just like, um, the perimeter. Perimeter is just adding up all the sides. So perimeter would never be nonlinear. That is linear. The cost of a cell phone based on data usage, if uh, the cost is uh, $5 per gig, per gig that you use, the second gig is also $5. The third gig is also $5. You keep on adding $5. This is linear. And the first one is linear also. The third one is also linear because, again, if you pull up to a gas station, and you are getting a gallon of gas, and let's just say it's two ninety five for the gas per gallon. This next gallon is also two ninety five. The next gallon after that is two ninety five. So that is a linear function. The more gallons that you buy, the more the price is going to be. Of course, the greater the the cost, but it's the same per gallon. All right, and that is linear. The volume of a cube as a function of the side length. So if you didn't know the formula of the volume of a cube, it is V equals A to the third power. 
And if you see like that, if even if you didn't know the formula, let's say you didn't know the formula, um, it's kind of like length times width times height, but it's like it's it's a cube. So each side is the same. So you, instead of saying length times width times height, you say a cubed, right? Um, and as soon as you have that exponent next to a variable, you know it's nonlinear. But even if you didn't know the formula, the perimeter, you, you just never pick it as like you're adding up all the sides. And that is not a formula that is nonlinear. The cost of a cell phone, anything that remains the same every time that you buy something um, per pound or per gig or whatever it is, or per gallon, that is always linear. So that's why B and C are out. So process of elimination volume is the one that you're even guessing on even if you don't know the formula so which of the following sets of coordinates could not be part of a linear function could not be part of a linear function so first off i think easier just to check to see if the x's are are repeating because let's just cancel out the ones that are not functions so I'm looking at A and I see 0, 1, and 3. That's linear. Uh, that's a function. 2, 4, and 6. 2, 4, and 6 functions. They're all functions. So which one could not be linear, basically? So if you're taking, um, if, the real way to do this is to actually figure out the slope twice, right, of, of the line. So you can, but you can uh, do a, like a basic shortcut where you can see what the kind of the trend of the line is, the, the pattern, right? So I'm going to skip this one because you know how like the X goes from zero to one and then all of a sudden from one to three, that does not mean it's nonlinear, all right? But the X is doing something a little bit strange. So it's not staying constant, really, the X and again i don't want to mess with that one so i'm just going to go to b and you see how x goes from two to four and from four to six well i'm adding two each time right so that means it's kind of like adding two to the x adding two to the x what's happening to the y well the y is adding 15. so if the y is adding 15 while the x is adding 2, this is linear. It remains constant. So if I look at c, I see also the same thing. 2, let me just change my color here. 2 goes to 4, and then 4 goes to 6. So I know that the x is adding 2, right? So as the x is adding 2, the y is adding 3. Then all of a sudden, the y doesn't add 3, so it adds 3 here, but it doesn't add 3 here. It adds 6. That is nonlinear. It is not constant. So I didn't really have to check out the first one, but I would actually do the slope, uh, figure out the slope, 7 minus 5 and 3 minus 1, and then 5 minus 4 and 1 minus 0, and we would get the same slope. So the, so the first one would be linear, but this one definitely is nonlinear. So which could not be part of a linear function. Um, BC is definitely nonlinear. It does not remain the same. The pattern does not remain the same. This three goes to five. This five goes to seven. So you're adding two to the X there, but you're also subtracting five all the way for the Y. So that I know that the last one is linear because the pattern remains the same. If the pattern remains the same, it's linear. If it's nonlinear, that means the pattern's not going to remain the same. So number six, um, we have, again, which ordered pairs. It, first off, they say that the ordered pairs represent a linear function. So I'm going to do this simply by seeing what the jump is from just the x. They just want you to figure out which values can be the next x and y in this line. So I'm going to change this to 0 0.25 
because that's what 1 divided by 4 is. And then 3 divided by 4 is 0.75. So this is 1.75. Hopefully you understand what I'm doing there. So if this is 0 0.5, 0 0.25, and then this is 1.75, I could take my calculator and figure out 1.75 minus 0.25 would be in a, adding 1.5. So this jump right here would be add, would be like adding 1.5. So the next jump would be 1.5. So I'm going to take 1.75 and add 1.5. And there's my next x, 3.25. But that's the x and not the y. So the y... I'm going to change to 2.5. Two and a half is 2.5. 2. 2 and 3 fourths is 2.75. So obviously the jump here is much easier. 0 0.25. You're adding 0 0.25. If you don't know that, just subtract these two numbers and then you will get what the difference is. So now I'm going to add from 2.75 to uh, 0 0.25 to it, and I'll get 3. So the next, that's your work. So the next point could be 3.25, comma, 3. And you could continue down the line. You could add 1.75, I'm sorry, 1.5 to the x and get the next x, and you could add 0.25 and get the next y. But they only wanted 1. And that's basically it. All right, classifying functions, which of the following equations do not represent linear functions? So first off, it has to be in y equals mx plus b. That's the format. So right here with the exponent there is nonlinear. So this does not, so A is 1. X equals 8 is linear. X equals 8 is linear. And I'll grab my graphing calculator for a second. So X equals 8 is, and I'm jumping to C, um, is a vertical line. That's where X equals 8. So let me just sketch it just a little bit here. Um, putting a vertical line, putting the x and y axis, axes right there. And I'm just going to move this down here. And this is x equals 8, where x equals 8, 0. x equals 8, 1. 8, 2. 8, comma, 3. 8, comma, negative 1. 8, comma, negative 3. So this is the line x equals 8. And if you could see it right here, I'm going to draw it right there. Right, and that is x equals 8, and that is linear. All right, so that is linear. This one right here is y equals 5x over 11. Just remember, this is the slope. So that is a linear function. It's like y equals mx plus b. That is that format. That's the slope 5 over 11. The y-intercept is 0. For this one, if you were just going to solve it for y, you would add x and then minus 3, add x and minus 3. So you would get y equals 2, this cancels, this cancels, 2x, because x plus x equals 2x minus 3. And that's y equals mx plus b. This is linear. This one is y equals mx plus b. This is linear. And anything with a square root is nonlinear. And just to prove it to you, I'm just going to go square root of x plus 3. So I'm going to graph square root of x plus 3 and graph it. 
and you can see right there it is a function but it is nonlinear All right nonlinear so that's basically it so a and f nonlinear they do not represent linear functions identify whether each graph represents a function and just tell if it is a linear or not so let's go ahead to some vertical line tests so a circle is never a function no is it linear nonlinear it is not a straight line is this a function yes Is it linear? Nonlinear. Is this a function? Yes. Is it linear? Nonlinear. Is this a function? Yes. Is it linear? Linear. Straight lines are linear, N lines that are not straight, nonlinear. Topic number three, comparing rates of change in two functions. Rate of change is the slope. Just remember, rate of change, we have to find the slope. So y equals mx plus b is what you should understand that the m is the slope. So the M here for function A is negative two. Now for function B, we have a table. So we're just gonna do the slope formula. We're gonna calculate the slope of that table of values. The slope formula is Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. So quickly, we have seven minus four and 1 minus 0. It's 3 over 1, which is 3. Put that in your calculator. And so now function A and B have equal rates of change. No, they don't. Function A and B have negative rates of change. No, they don't. Only A does. Function A and B have zero rates of change. No, D is your answer. B has a greater rate of change than A. So uh, we have AT&T and Verizon offer the following cell phone plans. Where customers wear, why is the total cost? Why is always the total cost? And X represents the cost per text message. The Verizon cell phone plan is this. This is the Verizon cell phone plan. AT&T cell phone plan is listed in the table. So we, we don't know what that question is. Based on the information above, which company charges more per text? They're talking about the slope, the rate. So let's talk about Verizon Wireless, and they were giving, they're giving us the equation here. The slope, the rate is 15 cents per text message. For this one, the input is your X. So we're going to put X1. And we're going to out, output is Y1. This is X2. This is Y2. So obviously, we're going to have to do the Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. Y2 minus Y1 is 20 minus 15. And X2 minus X1 is 100 minus 50. Now, I don't know what that is, but I'm going to bring the calculator up and just put this directly into the calculator just as I see it. I'm going to clear this out, press the fraction symbol, 20 minus 15 over 100 minus 50. That is 5 over 50. And actually, you might want to simplify it. It's 1 over 10. If you press the double arrow, it should give you the decimal equivalent. So we are going to say that AT&T 
as a 0.1 per text message. But because of this is money, um, you have to add that zero after the one. It's 10 cents per text versus Verizon Wireless, 15 cents per text. Based on the information, which company charges more? Verizon charges five cents more. Done. <coughs> and that's it. Not five dollars, not ten dollars. So that's out. AT&T does not charge more. The table in the graph below show the data about the number of days saving about and the saved by Adam and Bianca. The table and graph below show data about the number of days spent saving and the amount saved about the amount saved by Adam and Bianca. Okay, so here's a graph. Here's Adam's savings. He starts with $3. So this is B. I'm immediately putting 3. Now, I'm going to look for another point that is in the corner of a box. I need whole number of coordinates. My run is 1. My rise is 3. So it's 1, 2, 3. So the slope is 3 over 1, which is 3. The equation of that line is y equals 3x plus 3, but they didn't want that. So they just want how much uh, to compare the savings be. So this is x1, this is y1, this is x2, this is y2. This is Bianca's savings. So we're going to put down y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. We have 26 minus 17, and then we have 8 minus 5. And again, grab your calculator. Press the fraction symbol. 28, sorry, fraction. 26 minus 17 over and then 8 minus 5. Put it directly in. Don't mess around. It's 3. It's $3 per day. This is $3 per day. Okay, now we can answer the question, which statement correctly compares the saving speed of Adam and Bianca? Each day, Adam saves $3 more. No, he doesn't. Each day, Adam saves $3 less. No, he doesn't. They both save 3 Yes, they do. And that's it. C is your answer. That's it. All right, number four, the table and the graph, each below, um, the graph below, each represent a function of X. Okay, they're functions. So, X1 y1 x2 y2 i don't even know the question all right um which function a or b has the greater rate of change so like every time you see a table of values anytime you see a graph they probably want you to do rise over run they probably want you to do to figure out the rate all right so y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 m equals 3 minus 1 over 2 minus 0. That's 2 over 2, which is 1. So now we're going to do rise over run here. We're going to search and search and search, and here's the good point. We're going to do run, and we're going to do rise. So this rise is 2, this run is 3. 1, 2, 3. So the slope is 2 thirds. So let's go answer the question. Which function, A or B, has a greater rate of change? Be sure to include the values for the rates of change. Here we go. This is B. This is A. Okay, function A has the greater rate of change. Um, function A has 1 as the rate of change, while function B has 2 thirds as the rate of change. Function A has a greater rate of change because it is further from 0. Just remember it says be sure to include the values 
for the rates of change in your answer. So it did, and uh, I did. All right. Number five, same thing here. Determine who saves more per day. And you are looking at basically the same question. All right. The table, this is, uh, these are two different people. And we're going to do rise over run. Just like in the other table that looked exactly the same. You have a one and a three. So the slope is three. And right here is x1, this is y1, this is x2, this is y2. Uh, and you have 24 minus 7, which is y2 minus 17, which is y2 minus y1, and 10 minus 5. I'm going to grab the calculator to 24 minus 7. Twenty-four minus seventeen. It's not seven. So we press the fraction symbol. Twenty-four minus seventeen over ten minus five. Let the calculator handle the math. It is one and two over five. Uh, and really, that's really all you need. Um, if you want to change it into something that you can uh, see as far as uh, not a mixed number. So you press second function and you can press this right here. The mixed number symbol and you get 7 over 5. Then I would change it to 7 divided by 5. Since we're talking about money. So it's M equals 1.4. Zero. So now you, you, you know exactly how much they uh, saved per day with Bianca. Uh, so, yep, A is your answer. And that's it. Bianca does not save more. Uh, they don't save the same. And it's not one more, uh, one more per day, one dollar more per day. All right, so A is your answer, and that is it. Number six, how does the rate of change of the graph compared to the rate of change of this function? As soon as they give me that function, I'm going to just put the rate of change down. And then this one is negative as well. I'm going to start with the y-intercept and this number right here, because that is a perfect point. So this is negative 2 over 1, so the slope is negative 2. So this, the graph has a rate of change of negative six. No, it doesn't. Both the graph have, uh, and the equation have a rate of change of negative two. No, they don't. The graph and the equation have a rate of change of negative six. No, they don't. The graph has a rate of negative two and the equation has a rate of negative six. Yes. That's it. All right, topic number four, which function has the least rate of change? The same thing over and over again. Just remember, rise over run. This is five, not one. This is not one, that's 100. So 100 divided by five is 20. So the M is 20. The M here is seven. The M here is $10 per hour equals 10. This is the y-intercept, by the way. I'm going to go all the way over here and do x1, x2. Just be careful because that table is on, um, it's horizontal. So it's one, m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So y2 is 1 minus is from the formula negative 2. As soon as you see a double negative, you add 1 minus 0. So it's 3 over 1. This is 3. All right. So which one has the least rate of change? This is 10. This is 3. This is 7. This is 20. C has the least. Closest to 0. All right, Sam wants to buy pizza for lunch. Um, there are three pizzerias by the by her house. The price per slice of pizza in each pizzeria is shown below. 
the number next to the x is the amount that you're paying per slice. This one says per slice, so I'm going to put 110 per slice. I'm going to go with, look, I mean, you could do x1, y1, x2, y2, but when they have one slice and it's saying that it's 150, obviously this is the slice of pizza. That's how much it costs, one slice of pizza. So, but if you really wanted to show some work, it is 3 minus 150 and 2 minus 1. And obviously that is 150 per slice. So which one has the least, which charges the least? Because we want to get, we're cheap and we want cheesy pizza. Cheesy pizza, a dollar ten. There's no pizza for a dollar ten. Not anymore. So number five, topic number five graph interpretation so we are just talking about the intervals right of, of x that is that is decreasing and linear so it has to be straight it has to be decreasing so i'm gonna go right here and that is a really bad line so i'm just gonna erase it I'm going to try again. A little bit better. Not great still. All right. So it starts going down right here. So I'm, I'm going to say that's 15, obviously, because it's 10 in between 10 and 20. That is 40. So in between 15 and 40, it's decreasing in linear. That's it. The graph below shows Sandy's water dish. I guess Sandy is a doggy. What is one possible interpretation of this section here uh, between 30 and 60 seconds? So between 30 and 60 seconds, something is happening or maybe not. All right, so 30 and 60. The water starts at 400, then goes down here. So obviously Sandy is drinking here. Um, he's drinking. Sandy is not drinking here. So let's go see the water is remaining the same. Sandy was drinking water between 30 and 60 seconds. No. Sandy stopped drinking water to investigate a noise. Okay. Sandy tipped the bowl of water over. If she tipped the bowl of water over, it would go down to immediately go down to zero. So that's not happening. And the owner filled up the bowl. No, it's not increasing. It's just staying the same. So B is your answer. And that is that. Number three, the graph of the function is shown below. Describe each section of the graph. This is basically what you have to describe. So section N, which is right here, is increasing and linear. P is increasing and linear. So section Q, slope is zero. It's not increasing. It's not decreasing. It is linear, though. Section R is increasing and linear. Okay, Bicycle Club, 
went on a six hour ride. The graph below shows this number of hours spent on the trails. What happened between three and four hours? They always talk about this section right here. That right there. They stopped. They stopped for an hour. Stopped to have lunch. Stopped riding. Stop riding. How many hours did it take the bicycle hub to ride 50 miles? So 50 miles is right here, right? So 50 miles. How long did it take them? Six hours. And that's that. Scatter plots. Last topic. The owner of a coffee shop compared the amount of hot coffee per day in fluid ounces. Draw a line of best fit. So we're going to draw that line of best fit. Remember, anytime that you draw a line of best fit, it has to go through the center of all the points. And it ha must be straight. So we did that. How many fluid ounces would the coffee shop sell if the temperature was 90 degrees? So according to our trend line, the coffee shop would sell and we're going to go up to the trend line just like this and then we're going to go all the way across and that I'm going to say is about 310 degrees 310 fluid ounces if you're around there 300 that's good if you're not at 300, if you're at like maybe 500, that's not good. All right. How many fluid ounces would the coffee shop sell if the temperature was 40 degrees? Let's see what mine would come to. A little bit above 600. Again, let me just put 610. And that's it. How many fluid ounces would the coffee shop sell if the temperature was zero degrees? Whoa, zero degrees. Let's see, zero. Going all the way up. All the way up. About 850, 840. 840 fluid ounces, I'm going to say. 840 fluid ounces. In each case, you're going to draw your trend line. And then you're going to go to the, the number that they, that they are giving you. All right. And then they want the prediction for. Ever, and then just go to that, draw a dotted line all the way up to the trend line and then across to the Y axis. And then you'll get the amount. And it's just a prediction um that's it there's nothing else remember draw a trend line with a ruler and it's always straight it does not have to start from zero zero so my trend line right here is going to go through this point right there i'm going to go right about there right so the trend line's done does this scatter plot have a positive or negative association it is a positive association it is also linear and you could say it's strong if they ask pretty strong is the data on this scatter plot represent a linear or nonlinear function? I already answered that. That's linear. Does it have an outlier? No. Draw an outlier. Outlier would be something like this. And circle it. Woo! Yeah. That's about it. Outlier is, is a point that is away from the rest of the data. And 
Lots about it. Identify the correlation for each of the scatter plots. A horizontal line um, scatter plot like this, and I know it's a little bit difficult to see because I just drew with the same color. But say if I had that right there, um, it indicates no or very little correlation. So they're not going to ask you that, but just realize if you have a horizontal scatter plot, that it is, you can't really identify the correlation. This is no correlation. Going down right here, I'm just going to move it like right in the center of all the points. And that's how you draw your trend line. Negative correlation. And yes, this is linear. And it's also strong. Scatter plot right here. Draw your trend line, positive correlation. Yes, it's linear. And this would be a good weak. It's a weak correlation. The points are a little bit further away from the trend line. Which point appears to be an outlier, this one. All right, so 18th week, 18th week, paycheck at 165. So if we drew a point like a dotted line all the way across, you would have D as your answer. That is the outlier. Scatter plot. Right here, we're going to draw a trend line. That's what we always do with scatter plots. What is true about the statement? There's a strong negative. No, there isn't. Strong positive correlation relationship between the amount of money and the amount of money gained. I think that might be the answer right there. Um, so we get that. And there is a weak negative. No, there's no negative at all. There's a weak positive. No, I wouldn't say this is a weak positive. B is your answer. There's a strong positive relationship between the two. And that ends our review sheet. Hopefully it helped. The video helped out. Um, and thank you for watching. Bye, everyone.